good day to you. My name is Walt. I'm sorry. I had to re-record this intro like 10 times already. My name is Walt. I'm talking about comics and books uh, on my channel. And um, regarding the channel, apropos to my channel, I've, um, I made a video two weeks ago where um, I was asking you guys like, what do you think about some ideas that I have about my channel and about like maybe somehow financing it through different ways and um, I got a lot of, of interesting responses to that and um, also very diverse opinions which really really helped me um, to you know to choose a path for me and um, it's not completely clear yet but I think I'm inclined to um, to go with the um, campaigning part because I have a few uh, comic proposals comic pitches um, in the works right now and um, of course I will try the traditional way uh, going through publishers but if this doesn't work out uh, I might try to self-publish them somehow so um, yes until then I will have uh, a lot of comics going on eBay very soon so if you want to grab some single issues or uh, paperbacks or even new stuff you can go on eBay and there is also still the possibility to buy completely new comics, mostly hardcovers and omnibuy uh, from me through my newsletter. Um, and you can um, subscribe to the newsletter uh, in the description. Uh, but there's that. Now let's start with the single issue reviews. The first one is Action Comics number 1002 and it's a nice, I'm sorry I'm weird today, I'm in a good mood but it's, it's a bit too much even for me. Um, so it's the Invisible Mafia part 2, something is going on um, in Metropolis and um, some bad things are going on. Uh, people are, are um, looting houses and uh, they want to put everything on Superman and there is some conspiracy um, evolving here in the second chapter uh, which was really 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 nice to read it, it was it was fun it was more like a, a, a Superman or Clark doing detective work and um, not so much action but there was enough enough there that, that kept you, you know, wanting more. And I think um, for me, this really works. Bendis on action. You, you have also a lot of Bendis ads in, in those books. You might wonder if he moved to DC just to promote his uh, Jinx World books. Um, yes, the R is, uh, is fine. It's by Patrick Gleason. Um, it's not his the most impressive Gleason that I've I've seen. Um, maybe it's also because of the coloring, which was, I don't know, not very specific. Uh, I would, I would, um, I would add. Uh, but yeah, it was an entertaining uh, installment, and well, those two pages look gorgeous. So uh, I will take everything back that I just said about Gleason and Sanchez, the colorist, because those two pages are amazing, and. Um, Yes, but we need to find out more and there is a teaser um, at the end of it. I won't spoil it for you, but it was really well done. It was because it was so underplayed uh, that you were left hanging there and you want to know more. Um, yeah, really well put together comic uh, that is fun to read. And this is what DC is doing pretty good right now. So a lot of people are bitching online about like uh, comics are in this state of, I don't know, apocalypse. Uh, but it's not quite true. I mean, more books than ever are being published today. And um, I also think more books than ever that are at least uh, interesting or, or above average are being published today. Um, but they, it's hard for them and I know why because people compare everything with the past which is I don't know 70 years of comics and a lot of masterworks in those years but 
well, spread over many decades uh, and now everything is available. So you have to choose, do I buy this new $4 Supergirl book um, or do I go to all those legendary Supergirl runs? I don't know if there are so many, I'm, I'm not a Supergirl expert, but um, it makes it hard to, um, to compete with, uh, comics has to compete with its own past and it's pretty hard to do. This was decent. I'm still, I have this thing when, whenever I, I fa fall in love with one author's run on, on, a, on a certain comic, uh, like I did with Mark Andreko's run on, on uh, Manhunter, which is like over 10 years ago. Um, I always think, well, they will, they will go back to their greatness. I know it. I will sample everything that they will release for another 10 years and just wait for it. And um, this was okay. Uh, but like I said, I have no um, no special bond to the character or to the to the history, to the legacy of Supergirl. Uh, it's it's it was um, solicited as a good um, jumping on point, and it's it probably is. But it's this kind of jumping on point where they have to clean house first. <laughs> so yeah, she she's she's depressed because something bad has happened her world was destroyed like really really bad uh, but uh, you know I, I I don't feel anything because I wasn't there so I I'm supposed to jump right into it and feel sympathetic for someone um, and I don't know why so this was my problem with this book other than that it was I would say like a nice average soapy superhero book um if you're a fan of the series um crypto shows up is also fun and um, it's 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 an okay okayish book i guess um well this was a letdown uh and i didn't expect it because <laughs> Uh, okay, I did expect it in a way because number 50, you know, uh, many people have said many things about it, but um, the most, I, I think the, the biggest problem that it had was that it created excitement for something that didn't happen. And for me here, it's a little bit the same with this new mini arc um, where uh, Bruce Wayne is on jury duty and he tries to correct something that he did as Batman. Um, he forced um, Mr. Freeze to um, to testify uh, on being um, responsible for a murder, and now he's he's having doubts, and he goes into um, yes into this jury thing, and he tries to convert the others who are who are pretty sure. I mean, if Batman uh, helped put this guy into prison, then um, He's, he's probably guilty, right? And he tries to convince everyone that Batman isn't always right. And the problem that I have is um, that it doesn't work. I'm just not convinced. So if I'm part of this, of this group of, of people who um, Bruce Wayne is addressing here... Um, nope, I, I just don't buy it. I'm sorry. Ah, coffee. I'm sorry for um, the break. Actually, it was a 24 hour break. I started the recording yesterday, then I got a call and I had to, to work on something. Uh, but now I'm back with the single issue reviews and we'll continue with, um, yeah, well, the Batman thing. Um, so he gives this emotional speech, but um, he just, uh, it, he doesn't stick the landing for me. Uh, I will still keep the issues because like I told you, the, the art is amazing. Or did I tell you that? I'm not sure because the recording stopped. Um, the art is super freaking amazing. It's probably the, some of the f best art that I've seen all year. And uh, Lee and Brightweiser have now a very special place in my heart um, and so does Tom King but not for his Batman run so I'm out of Batman forever
as long as Tom King stays on the book. Next up, another Batman book. It's Kings of Fear. Hunt of the Scarecrow by... Uh, what's his name? Scott Peterson. And, and that's the most important selling factor for this book. Kelly Jones. Ladies and gentlemen, is back to Batman. I have to confess that I... I know, of course, Kelly Jones' art, uh, but in his heyday, when he was really big um, and he worked a lot on, 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 on Batman, uh, I was a complete Marvel guy. I was either out of comics or just like complete Marvel zombie. Um, and I, I didn't really read a lot of Kelly Jones' comics, but I always liked him. And, and here's why. Um, he draws a very cartoonish, horror, weirdo Batman. It's like David Lynch if uh, he would draw superhero comics, I would say. The extremities are in weird proportions and um, he can definitely add a lot of depth and atmosphere to a scene. This is a fantastic fight sequence here on this page. Um, and you have all this... Um, he can do this... Uh, Lighting effects, which are really um, very cinematographic and cool. Look at this um, panel here. Um, and yeah, this low angle when you look like really creepy. And he can he can pull this off really, really good. And yeah, the coloring was a bit dark. Um, it might be because of the matte paper. I don't know. Maybe they haven't completely adjusted to the new paper. But I still liked it. Uh, so it's dark. Sometimes you don't see enough. The contrast between the colors is not strong enough, but I still enjoyed it uh, From the art perspective from the story perspective. There is not much to say it was uh, almost like it felt like an excuse for um, For Kelly Jones to To put his magic on the page, but only buy it for the art. Uh, the story is zero next up Red Hood and the Outlaws Annual number two, and uh, it's a five dollar book, um, and it's a bit decompressed. You can see, like, it's very uh, the splashy art, a lot of space, a lot of empty space. I, I don't mind that, it's actually easy on the eye, and uh, it, it was a very fun read by Scott Lobdell. Uh, I, this is one of my favorite series right now. This is old school superhero storytelling um, done right. Um, hitting all the little emotional, um, you know, plot points that is supposed to hit. And here we have um, a, a, a bromance buddy moment between uh, Red Hood and Arsenal, his buddy from the Titans. And um, they both have their issues to deal with. You know, they're, they're having this uh, whole new um, theme in, DC, in the DC Universe that... Um, I think it's Sanctuary, right? Uh, the, the series by um, Tom King. So Tom King is getting heavy uh, into um, the depressing PTSD state of superheroics. <laughs> and I think he's the right guy to do it because he is a very, let's say, emotional, psychologically gifted guy. Sometimes it's not working like on Batman, but in general, I think uh, it's great. I love to read those kind of stories. And yeah, there is this theme now in the whole DC universe that everyone's dealing with uh, his issues, uh, his personal issues, and are on a uh, on a self-aware trip, um, questioning, uh, you know, the whole superheroic thing. Um, am I doing it right? What about the the victims? My my own personal sacrifice, and so on and so on. And they're hurt, basically. They just hurt and need to be healed and uh, this is what the sanctuary is for and this book was a fun still fun way to deal with this heavy topic uh, Clayton Henry on art um, like I told you a lot of empty space but still well done um, a loose um, yeah fun book not much more to say about it other than if you enjoy the regular series this is right up your your alley. Uh, Sandman over no, it's not overture. It's universe this time. 
And uh, yeah, it's written by Neil Gaiman. I don't know. It's written by Neil Gaiman and four other people. They were probably like having a nice, a nice talk for half an hour, and then Neil Gaiman was like, "Have fun, guys." And uh, I suspect it's just my. <laughs> Maybe I'm I'm not uh, I'm a bit cynical about it, but I, I can't imagine like Neil Gaiman writing this thing, which is basically not even a story. I mean, if Neil Gaiman puts his talents to to work, he will create something original. This is like a sampler, um, and I I think it's probably written by Simon Spurrier, um, and it's also like the. Um, the framing of it is inside of his of his series, The Dreaming, which is starting this week, I think. Um, and yeah, the, the artwork uh, of his sequences uh, is super beautiful because it's by Bilkis, what's her name? It's a very weird and beautiful name, but I forgot it. Bilkis Quivley or something like that. And it's amazing. I love it. Um, and I will get the, um, the number one issue of The Dreaming as I will of, um, as it's Bill Kiss Everly, as I will of Lucifer, which I really loved back in the day for uh, the series by Mike Carey was fantastic. Um, other than that, the other two didn't pick up my interest at all. And there is this problem of um, you know, paying five dollars for what is basically um, should be like a one dollar book on free or or a free comic day book, because there there is yeah, uh, Sandman has left or Sandman is missing, whatever. This could have been like two pages, um, and then it's just like jumping from series to series, and it's not telling stories, little nuggets of story, but it's more telling the situation the characters are in, you're, you're introduced to the characters and the, the ba basic conflicts, uh, but not to the story world per se. The most in the dreaming, uh, the other three, it's just a preview book for $5. I don't get all the rave reviews. Uh, next up is Pearl, um, which I found to be interesting. It's by Brian Michael Bendis and Michael Gatiss, um, who created Alias, and uh, it's all over the, from the creators of Jessica Jones, it's all over the place. Of course, it's the biggest selling point, but I don't know, I never took issue with it in the past, but Michael Gatiss is really heavy on the photo referencing side of things with his art. I mean, look at this. It almost looks like, um, you know, there are now those filters, those comic book filters you can put on photos. And um, especially the faces are just like photographs. Um, uh, so this was a, a bit disturbing and the story, while, you know, the, the whole layout of the thing and the look of it, it's cool. Um, it's just like the photo re referencing that I didn't like. And the story is... Well, I don't know. It's about uh, um, some Yakuza thing and some uh, tattooing and a lot of like cliches you would think up. And then the, the femme fatale with a gun. Um, do I need to read this? Uh, I don't think so. Definitely not in a monthly format. Um, the coloring is great. I think it's also by Gatiss. And uh, I wish he would start draw more freely and uh, stop referencing as, as much. But uh, maybe that's just me. I don't know. Next up is Stellar. Um, another book which uh, for me the big pull uh, was the art. And I'm still undecided if I like it or not. But it's so special. It's so weird. Um, Look at this. It's um, something between amateurish and horrifying and, and horrorish. Horrifying? Horrifying is a bad thing. No, it's not bad. Uh, it's that it's, uh, it has this naivete uh, about it, but also something really dark and um, hideous in it, hidden in it. 
So this was basically one long fight scene and um, they talk over some some stuff from the past and uh, they want to win her over and she doesn't want to. And it was a bit of a um, non-event issue. I could have easily skipped it, I think, and still would have understood the next one. Um, and I was for a moment thinking of maybe cancelling it because I have so many books right now on my pull list. But I don't know, I, I, I just love this this super unique style of this book. Um, so yeah, I will stay with it. And I like the dynamics, the, the, the kinetic, um, you know, everything is flashes and blitz and stuff is happening. Uh, yeah, it's cool. I still enjoy it. Uh, the Weatherman, number three. I loved number one. I was still on board for number uh, two, but this is becoming like uh, like a torture interrogation comic. <laughs> so we have another two situations, like the second issue was all about like torturing someone <laughs> until he confesses. And this is again like another guy. I don't know. I, either I didn't understood it or it's not explained yet there is another guy who gets tortured here by um i don't know who whatever i forgot i forgot parts of it already so yeah whatever another guy gets tortured and then we get back to our uh, main story uh where uh the weatherman who it turns out little spoiler here um had a previous identity who was erased from his head and with uh, the woman who we thought of of being his um, his girlfriend and it turns out she's some special agent and he she hates him and now they're um, they're still together but not because of of their love relationship but because they have to find uh, the bad guys who um, who want to attack this planet again and the artist uh, is still super cool by Nathan Fox but I feel that the story is a bit lacking. Um, I was expecting maybe a little bit too much of it. I was expecting the, the energy of the first issue to continue. Uh, but now it's it has arrived at a certain place in, at the end of issue one. And it stayed there um, most of the time. And um, yeah, it's maybe not enough... Um, movement in the story or in the in the sci-fi elements of it i don't know uh, something is, is is bothering me i can't pull, put my finger on it, on it yet uh, the terminator sector war by brian wood so I, I have become something of a brian wood fanboy because all of his latest books i was really hooked by and this one here was uh, nice but it uh, it was so um heavily um, not ripping off, but um, let's just say formed on the on the on the premise of the first Terminator film. That yeah, it it, it read like a reboot of it, and that I found uh, just too boring. Um, and also like paying four dollars for it. I know the story already. Um, and he did the same with Robocop in a way, but um, it felt much fresher. But this year with Terminator, I don't know. It it was, it was above average because of the art and the coloring. But um, just uh, selling off, uh, you know, profiting from from the title and the brand, but not a comic in itself. Um, Venom number five by Donny Cates and Bright, uh, uh, Ryan Stackman, and uh, well, Donny Cates is uh, firing on all cylinders right now he's uh, he's the marvel savior of the moment and actually i have to say um the number four i didn't like as much but this one was uh, really excellent um it's it's moving forward and um it's it's just great storytelling and uh yeah I, maybe this is a little spoiler uh, now demon wings on uh, on venom well maybe it's it, it's already spoiled on, on the cover um so this was like a great 
double page spread here and um, the, the art is growing on me. I wasn't completely sold in the beginning because it has this cartoonish side to it, but I'm, um, yeah, I'm getting to love it. And it's super dark, man. It's very, very dark. Um, and still human. So he, that's the quality of Donny Cates. He uh, can be emotional when he wants to. He can do big action stuff. He knows his continuity. He's like a comics comic dude, you know? He's like the comic dude who can also really write well. And that's why he's perfect for Marvel. And um, that's why he's also like writing like, I don't know, five different series right now. Uh, next up, Doctor Strange number four by Mark Waite. I still really, really enjoy this book. I wasn't expecting to, um, but I love the characters and I love the storytelling style um, that uh, Mark and he uh, Jesus Saiz are using here um, in that they, they jump forward. It's like super compressed storytelling. It's like um, for the Valiant fans out there, uh, Rai Zero, uh, this kind of narrator driven meta storytelling which jumps from this beat to this beat to this chapter to this chapter so it's a it's like a saga it's like super rich uh, the, the world is is fleshed out really well and we just jump from one highlight to the next one and um we didn't have no fillers in here and i really loved it it's it's super entertaining it looks very good and i think it's probably Marvel's best book, maybe a side of Venom, uh, but those are probably really the strongest books, at least that I'm uh, aware of, that Marvel is putting out right now. And this is probably Marvel's weakest offering uh, in a while. Well, probably not because I don't read most of their catalog, but this was real trash. I was so disappointed because uh, Matthew Rosenberg won me over with Astonishing X-Men. Um, I'm still subscribed to the series. I haven't cancelled it yet. I was so frustrated by this that I was thinking about it, but I really don't get it. So Astonishing X-Men is Havoc put, putting a team together, kind of like an outcasts team um, in the tradition of uh, Peter David's X-Factor. Um, so of course I bought this annual believing that it has something a little thing to do with this series that he's writing right now and has the same fucking title but it's not it's the original five x-men minus cyclops who are meeting are having like a tete-a-tete -a -tete, and uh, uh, in the in the blendest with the blendest art and in the blendest coloring that was possible uh, a lot of th thought must have gone into how can we Make it as fucking bland as possible. Let's meet in a restaurant and stay there for 10 pages and bore ourselves to death. Uh, great idea. Yeah, let's do that. Um, so yeah, a lot of talky, talky, talky in the restaurant. And then the Charles Xavier turns up. He's now different. He's younger. Somehow his spirit or his whatever. I, I don't get it. And I'm too frustrated to to really think about it. And then there is the you know the little town with evil people trope here that they're playing. So they go into this town where people hate mutants, but the mutants don't. Uh, the people don't hate mutants anymore, but uh, because they're mind controlled uh, by some evil dude. And uh, it was so boring. It was incredibly boring and bland. And it cost five dollars and it had nothing to do with this series that it's promoting astonishing x-men yeah it was like a filler book but for five dollars marvel get your shit together i'm really frustrated right now with marvel because um you know i made a joke when i was reviewing fantastic four they charged six six dollars for it that well soon they will charge 10 well the first step they've already taken uncanny x-men uh, was solicited now for eight dollars for the first issue yes it's 72 pages but nobody wants 72 pages of uncanny x-men 
if it's also a fucking weekly book. So for, for your first month of um, Uncanny X-Men, you have to invest like $20. Uh, it's, uh, it's incredible. I, I don't know what Marvel is, is thinking there. It's, um, it's really frustrating. And I was really psyched for a for, for fresh uh, start. And I still am a little bit. But um, the way they treat the fans and uh, this whole eventionitis that is going on all the time, it's killing me. Well, okay. Away with the negativity because I have discovered the best comic of the year. Um, may I present to you, ta -da, it's Ice Cream Man. And it's freaking fantastic. This book is uh, it's a bit weird. Um, I bought the first issue and I remember to really, really like it. I don't know if I offer it, I've already loved it, but it was really good. Um, and then I had this phase where I fell a little bit out of habit with uh, keeping up with my books and I got, I got a subscription and I got number two and three, didn't read them and then I canceled it and then I saw um, Sleepy Reader talking about uh, this book on his channel, which uh, I can highly suggest to you to check it out because we have a somehow similar taste in books and he's a great reviewer of books and I, I really trust his taste. So I subscribed to it again. <laughs> and I, I got like this two issues and still haven't read it. And, and today I finally caught up with it and I, I, I was blown away by the sheer, um, you know, how should I put it? Per perfection, perfection of it. Yeah, it is what it is. It's perfection. Uh, and it's even weirder because it's not a very, very well-established uh, writer. Uh, his name is W. Maxwell Prince, uh, artist by Martin Morazzo. I know Morazzo from um, Great Pacific which uh, was uh, an image series uh, written by Joe Harris. It's, it's a few years ago and I, I really enjoyed it. It wasn't like um, revolutionary, spectacular, whatever, but there's somehow about Moratz's art, which is very recognizable and he can do characters really well. I mean, the, the, this cover should tell you that he's really capable of, of very subtle expressions. And... Um, it helps when you have a writer which who writes in a very subtle way. So um, that's the great thing about uh, G, uh, W. Maxwell Prince. I'm sorry. He can do uh, the little subtle things, uh, but he doesn't get lost in it. He can also do like the crazy and genre. The, he can do the genre punch. But he's way too subtle to use it all the time. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I think that might be a, an okay way to put it. And you can see here um, in this little um, narrator box here that he's also using a very unique language for every character. So this is a procedural book. Every book has a new story. It's basically short stories. And the center of those stories is... Um, an ice cream truck vendor um, and uh, the setting is mostly suburban uh, the, those there, there there was one uh, which was in the big city but normally it's like this perfect suburbia everything is fine uh, you know the David Lynch uh, environment and then we find out that it's not and the darkness of it um, especially here in issue 2 is um is coming from very from a very human corner and 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 this is also what makes this book very interesting that it's not um this kind of um supernatural horror everything that is horror about it comes from inside the characters it's our um very human fears and doubts and um you know the ugly side of 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 humanity the the side that we we don't want to face all the time but that 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 is there somewhere and uh, here we we deal with um with a couple who are uh, on drugs they they're addicts 
and she's remembering her time with him, how she met him. And look at this, like it's a very, it's just one example, it's a random page here, um, how she, how Morazzo is depicting this. So there's this club scene here, which, uh, you know, it, it's this mix of abstract and uh, abstract and being realist at the same time which makes it the perfect panel for me and the highlight through the colors who's doing the coloring because he's also a genius Chris O'Halloran I mean this is perfect it's just so beautiful the basic colors here blue yellow and red uh, they compose this and it's in a triangle and it's 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 strike they they meet and they love each other and you can see here she remembers it how everyone would remember it like they're the colors uh, they're the 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 middle of everything and uh, the rest is just like gray surroundings but even in those there are always little details planned by um Morazzo and uh, I think this will be like a, a book or this is a series which you can read multiple times and find little nuggets in you. Um, and uh, yeah, so... <sighs> then begins a second um, story arc. I won't, I won't go into detail <laughs> with every issue, but this is like an example here. A second story arc where another pair of characters is created. This time they are very old and in a way codependent if you want um and they feel so real the 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 way they talk with each other and the the topics that they have it's so non cliche in a way it is cliche but in, it's broken cliche and it feels very fresh and original and um it's just fantastic writing um and if you think like oh no it's like uh, all those social issues i don't like those well, uh, here he goes in a completely different direction. It's like this one-hit wonder guy. He created this song and uh, he's now old and in the same diner every day and um, having like this frustrating second half of life, which is dull and non-inspiring. But then crazy stuff happens in his cellar. He's called by some alien force and <sighs> look look at this i mean those are like super beautiful art pages um uh, the way the graphic storytelling is done i don't know who's responsible for it maybe both of them um it's so well told it's so much fun to read it you you just fly through this comic like you have like the you know the perfect wings to <laughs> to just go through this from a, from a high point, but then you can also like go down and get involved and look at those little <laughs> weird details placed by Morazzo here. Um, yeah, it's a great read. Again, uh, like every issue was fantastic. I have to say this was also very very interesting. A guy jumps from uh, from a skyscraper and like his thoughts until he <laughs> he hits the floor. And uh, you see, they, they don't, it's not the, uh, like I told you, it's not like some indie kind of thing where everything is like only psychological. It really gets gory from time to time, but not for the sense of being gory, but because it's the perfect thing to do in this moment and you don't expect it. And that's why it's happening. Um, yeah, and the art, like I told you, I mean, look at those expressions. You totally know what those guys are going through here in this situation. You don't even need the captions. Um, yeah, writing, pitch perfect. Um, art, pitch perfect. And coloring too. Um, this is, in my opinion, I just finished this one. And it was super beautiful to look at and super inventive in its storytelling. It's just like, you know, one guy buying ice cream and then from there on, you can go in three directions and then he, the f comic follows his life through this, through possibilities of, um, you know, 
of being and everyone is kind of dark in the end. Well, more or less, let's put it that way. Um, and, you know, it's it's telling you that maybe like it starts you like super beautifully and you already like have a little doubt about it, if it will stay like this. Um, but yeah, I, I can't get into every detail because I would spoil everything for you. Uh, just believe me that th this is one of the most inventive and fantastic comics that there are out there right now. And you have to read it, please. Um, That's it for today. Thanks a lot for watching. Please subscribe, please comment, please interact with me. Tell me about the good stuff that you've read. And uh, you know, uh, Ice Cream Man, I, have, I wouldn't have like rediscovered if not for Sleepy Reader. Check out his channel. He's a great guy, great taste in comics. Um, and yeah, uh, join me and, uh, and the comic book community on Twitter. I know it's, it's a difficult place right now to be, I get it. But uh, the more relaxed people and positive people are on Twitter, the better for the platform. So um, join me there and uh, yeah, have a nice day, uh, read a good book. See you soon, bye bye.